Hi guys, my name is Zara and I'm a filmmaker here in Atlanta, Georgia. And today I'm going to be breaking down my film What Could Bloom. So What Could Bloom is probably the work that I'm most proud of. I feel like I had the biggest role in production. I directed it, edited it, filmed it, wrote it, and also recorded music for it. Production lasted from about March to May, and then it was screened at my school, where I won the award for Best Director. The Best Director Award for the 2019 Iris Film Festival goes to Zara Ayala. And then after that, it got into the Salzanz Film Festival at Johns Hopkins. It was screened there, and then it also got into the South Georgia Film Festival, Global Liftoff Sessions, and just recently, the All-American Film Festival, which I'm really proud of because that's like top-notch. I can't wait to make more films like it to submit to festivals, and I know with COVID-19 it's been hard to do that, but I've been coming up with a lot of ideas and I hope to do more soon. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. And and before you, before you watch this, make sure you've seen this film because I'm gonna be going in-depth and I don't want to spoil anything for you, so let's get into it. So right off the bat, we have Moonlight Sonata, and that was actually covered by two people at my school, Rebecca Wu on the piano and Avery Rio on the violin. They're both really talented, and I wanted to find like a classical instrumental piece of music to put in the beginning. And while I watched it back, I think maybe it was a little bit too dramatic of a choice. It makes everything look a little more like elegant and somber than it needs to be. I also have a clip, I think, believe of them playing it while I was recording it for this film so I can go ahead and attach that now. Oh yeah. Yeah. That shot's out of focus. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But this is Anna. She's actually the lead in this. She plays Jade Aberle, and ugh, I love her so much. She's one of my good friends, and she's such a talented actress. For this scene, I just wanted to like give a good kickstart to this film, and in order to do that, you have to make sure your opening scene looks really good to get people interested. Okay, so here there's this scene of her eating pretzels. I don't know why I put that in there. It's really, it's really not necessary to the plot. And then I tried to take it out, but then it looked weird, so I kept it in. And there was this really stupid line that I put after it, so we cut it out because every time we tried to do it, we would laugh. So for this, she's grabbing the letter, and as you can see, she glances at it. She's like, who is this? I- she left. Why- why am I reading this? Why is she sending me a letter after she left so abruptly? Hey Jay, how have you been? It's pretty and another thing I want to talk about is the color scheme here. So I tried far. to make sure that I got kind of like this vintagey vibe with greens and golds and whites and like darker colors. It's very, very high contrast, but I wanted to make sure I could get those lighter moments like behind in the door. You can see like the trees, the outline of the trees, and you can see like the glint of the gold, things like that. So this is one of my favorite movements to do with the camera and that's when you take it's actually my favorite piece of equipment it's called the slider what you do is you put the camera on it and you can do anything you want you can tilt it up and down you can move it forward you can move it side to side it's really small but you can actually do a lot with it i miss you with love adrian and as you can see, Jade is a little sad about this. I wanted to make sure to capture, you know, her, her true feelings. Like, she's sad her friend abandoned her, but she's also fed up. Like, you've been gone all this time and you couldn't apologize for basically leaving your best friend without a word and then writing this sorry letter. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you're doing well. So, of course, she's fed up, but she's also, like, taking it into consideration. So, we're done with scene one. Let's move on to scene two. Now, this is my absolute favorite part of the film. I just love a good wide shot, a pretty scene in the back, and the yellow text. And then I want to talk a little bit about the music. 
So this little humming piece wasn't supposed to be in the film. What I do is I also make music and I'll make a lot of like little like ukulele like humming bits. So this was one of them. And when we got to post-production, I watched the scene back and I was like, this needs something. You can't just be silent like the nature noise. So I actually put that song in there and it sounded amazing. Like it went with it. So I kept it. So I just wanted to have like an extended scene because a lot of my film is close-ups and dialogue and one of the biggest regrets I have is not filming more like showing more to tell and if I could do this again that's what I would change. I just I love this scene. I'm giving myself a pat on the back. That was stupid. Why did I do that? Okay anyways this was a little picnic basket that I got at the thrift store. You can actually get a lot of stuff at like Value Village, like furniture, really cheap stuff. And this basket was only like three bucks. And so you can get quite a bit for short films if you don't have a budget, a really, really low budget. In this case, we had that. You said that about fall too. Okay, that's fair. But everything blooms in spring. Tulips, hyacinths. Love. For these scenes, it was really hard to get the lighting just right. So for both of them, we had to use a reflector because it was kind of shady under the trees and the sun was kind of cutting out. And if we moved, it would mess up like the shot composition. Okay, sappy plant lady. We're just giving like subtle cues into, you know, Jade's kind of affection for Adrian. And right now it's mainly just friendly. But if you watch these little moments and then go to her realizing her feelings, you'll kind of see I wanted to give like subtle things to show that. I'm gonna miss all of this. Hey, nothing's even confirmed yet. I guess you're right. You can see the stakes are kind of raised already because her friend is moving away and it's all gonna be very different. The dynamic is gonna be completely shifted when she leaves. You know that game we used to play when we were really little where we would run all the way up the hill and then tumble down? So one of my other favorite shots to do is close-ups. They can really capture emotion. You can get like the little details, the little expressions. So I use that quite a bit. Yeah, and our parents will be pissed at us for getting <laughs> our clothes. Yeah. So now they're talking about their childhood, just another moment of nostalgia because Adrian's leaving and they don't have that much time left with each other and so they should reflect on all the good times they've had at all the places around their town where they go. Come on, it'll be fun. Please. Oh, I love that. I love the way. Please. That was cute. Hands. Hands are also very important to telling this story. They can mean a lot. Are you ready? Huh? Are you sure? I also filmed a shot where they were going up this hill, but for one of this clips, I'll put it in here. Anna actually like fell, like Angel dragged her and she fell and it's really funny, so I have to include it. <laughs> my name is Jade Aberlay, and I am racing down a hill with Adrian Woods, my closest friend. And at this very moment, I realized that I liked her. I added in a little like heartbeat sound effect there just to really like up the stakes. I think it really helps to convey what she's feeling, this speeding up heartbeat as it's gradually getting louder as she's running and then falling. Wait, what? I like her. Who put that kind of thought in your mind, Jade? And for this one, I just added a zoom in editing because it just looked better than if I had done it with the lens, I feel. Jade, are you okay? Uh yeah, why wouldn't I be? And the audio was a little bit rough for this part because what we did was we checked out a boom mic and it ended up not working at all. So we had to use the camera audio and we actually had to use the camera audio for quite a bit of it because all the booms at our school are kind of busted. So yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, there's a lot going on. It's okay, I get it. She's, she's a little lost right now. This is just some realization that hit her literally when she fell and bonked her head at the bottom of the hill. Again, you can see with Jade's expression that she's hiding something that she's not quite sure about yet. So the next song you're about to hear is from someone named Jace Hoffman. Their musician name is Shiler. And they have some pretty decent songs out, so you should check them out as well. I included all of them in the credits, so you can go listen to everyone who was involved in this. So now you're getting ready to hear another voiceover from Jade. Pay attention to the voiceovers because they actually have a huge role in this film and I wouldn't be able to convey these things without them. What was that, Jade? You like your best friend now. Your partner in crime, I mean Adrian, really. 
it does make some sense though. So first you get like the little like angry Jay talking to herself and then she's kind of just like, well, it makes sense. She's pretty, she's like a really nice human being who I've spent all this time with. So like, why is it that big of a surprise? So this scene was actually really easy to film. We just walked around to random parts of Decatur and just filmed her walking, 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 walking. I actually fell into a tree one of those times. And what does that say about you? Oh. <laughs> Girl, wait, does this mean that I'm- Are you gay? What? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I I'm good, of course. Why wouldn't I be? So this was my favorite thing to film. My like cleverest line. I'm actually really proud of this line. The other ones that I was trying to be like funny and quirky with weren't that funny, but this one had everyone laughing and I'm so glad because I really wanted it to work and it did. I don't know what was up with the white balance in this scene. I tried to fix it, but it was just really, really purple. We did some foley for this part. If you don't know what foley is, because apparently people don't know what it, that is, I thought everyone knew what that was. But it's basically when you want a sound effect or want like something over video and it's not that exaggerated in the actual clip, so you have to record it. If you're filming like a fight sequence and you want more defined punches, people will record like punching a bag of lettuce or like a head of meat or something like that. So we did that for the typing and a few other things. So what are you, Jade? And so let me break down that scene really quickly. Basically, Jade goes home and she gets in her bed. She's tired, but she's also curious. Like, what does this mean for me? She's never had to like explore her sexuality. She's never questioned it. It's always just been like, well, I'm here. I've never had feelings like this, especially not towards my best friend. And so it makes sense. She wants to go home. She wants to kind of do a little bit of research. So here I'm using my favorite little like tool again, the slider. And if you look closely, you can see that she's getting her books out, but she's closing the locker a little bit. And the reason why is because half of our school isn't really filled with that many classrooms. It's We go to a pretty small arts high school and no one really has lockers on that side. So we wanted to film somewhere where we knew we wouldn't be interrupted that much. So we went on this whole run to try and track down like the janitor with the keys, but it was the wrong janitor. So then we went to the front office and they didn't have the keys and then the counselor didn't have the keys. And finally we found the janitor we needed and he opened the locker and we knew if we accidentally closed it, we would have to go again and try to find him and get the keys. So we were like really delicate with it and we had to do multiple takes. Walk away, Jade. Just walk away and maybe these feelings will do the same. That was another clever line I did in there. Just walk away and maybe these feelings will do the same. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's just uh, something happened over the weekend and I can't stop thinking about it. So Levi is Jade's really good friend. Not as good as Adrian, but she knows that she can trust him with anything. He knows he can trust her with anything. If you need anyone to talk to, you know where to find me. I think that would help. Okay, great. I guess I'll see you later. This song is Thinking on My Own by Ralph Costelli. He's a very, very, very talented artist. He's on Spotify. You should definitely go check him out. Well, well, well. Look who it is. The one, the only, Jade. I'm so dramatic. Why did I put that in there? Ugh. And then Levi does a little like bowing thing. Ugh. That's me. Today I've decided to grace you with my presence in this coffee establishment. Another production setback that happened here was the boom stopped working and the camera audio was just so, so bad. What we had to end up doing was recording voiceovers into GarageBand with a microphone and then the actors would have to sit and try to batch their voices to the lips and that was very, very difficult. All right, let's get down to business. Okay. Let's get down to business. I think that I'm interested in girls. That came out wrong. Of course I'm interested in girls who isn't girls are cool. What I'm trying to say is that... So you like a girl, and it's new territory, and you don't know how to navigate it quite yet. I wanted Levi to be this character that kind of comes through as supportive as he can possibly be. And because Jade is so confused and lost and doesn't know what's going on, and so Levi needs to be there to be like, it's okay, girl, you got this, you got this, good job, you can do it. Listen, Jade, I'm super happy for you, but I can't tell you who you are. You have to figure out that part on your own. It's just so confusing. Yesterday I was on Tumblr and there's just so many 
something sexuals and something romantics and I'm not saying that they're not valid but it was just too much for me. We're in a society where there are a lot of labels and labels can be good, labels can be bad, anyone can label themselves however they want to label themselves. But the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes it does get confusing and you don't have to do that if you don't want to and if you want to go for it. There's no expectation. I know from first-hand experience how confusing it can be. You've planted a seed in the ground and you'll take care of it of course but it doesn't have to bloom quite yet and who knows what could bloom. And so here's where my analogy comes into play that I wrote in. She's planted a seed in the ground. Obviously that seed is her realizing these feelings, establishing, okay, yes, I am Jade and I like Adrian. And she can kind of care for that seed, kind of like figure out who she is because she doesn't know yet how genuine these feelings truly are and what it means for her in the long run. This is my favorite shot that I did. I filmed this in my yard. So there were these long like flowers sticking out of the ground. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to like do a little transition where I focused it on the closest flower, then to the second one, then to the third one, and finally to her. Hey Adrian, uh, I don't know if you're free tomorrow night, but would you want to come over? We can make s'mores or something. Just uh, let me know. Okay, bye. So here we see my favorite effect, the bokeh effect, come into play with these lights in the background. And the only reason we put up these lights was so that I could achieve that effect because I'd always wanted to do it before this film. Didn't we see each other yesterday at school? I tried to walk over, but then you hurried away. Uh, sorry, I had to get to class. Hmm. And since when were you ever in a rush to get to French? I don't know, I just was. So as you can see here, Jade's making excuses, but since Adrian knows her well enough, she knows that's a lot. Jade, I know you, and I know when something is wrong. Whatever it is, you can trust me. And then, as you can see, after that, Jade like looks at it like, oh, I have to tell her now. Like, I can't hold this in anymore. This is my best friend, and I know it may complicate things, but I can't keep this in any longer before she's about to leave. Adrian, um, I'm gay, <laughs> and how gay, I, I don't know, but there's this girl that I really like, and it made me realize that I've been denying who I am this whole time. Here we have the first major admission, because she realizes now, well, I have feelings for girls, but she realizes a part of her has always been there, and it's taken Adrian to realize that. I'm so proud of you for getting this out, Jade. Let's make some celebratory s'mores. So she's very supportive in this scene. I didn't want her to be homophobic. So here you just get them making s'mores, and it's just a lighthearted moment, a celebration of sorts. The thing about this is taking the camera off the tripod for a second and kind of getting those close, intimate, bonding moments. So who's the lucky girl? Lucky girl? Yeah. The girl that you said you liked. They're sitting down, they had their little moment of fun after Jade's confession, and now Adrian's curious. And so after Adrian was so accepting the first time, Jade's more confident now. She's ready to tell Adrian her secret, and she thinks it'll be okay. Well, it's you. I like you, Adrian. Oh. And I know it's a lot to take in, but I hope it doesn't come between our friendship. I should get home. It's getting pretty late. So this is the very unfortunate part of my film. What I was trying to convey in this moment is that you can be accepting of something and not accepting at the same time. And I think that Adrian was so taken aback by Jade's confession that sure, she's fine with her friend being gay, but she doesn't know what to do now that it's directed at her. Another thing I wanted to show because I know it's more common in real life, is that it usually in scenarios where a friend likes their best friend, it's not always a happy ending. And so here's another one of my favorite shots, and it is Jade kind of sitting back like the side that of her, and you can see the trickle of the lights Adrian. down behind her. At school, she no longer spoke to me. All I saw were glimpses of her passing by in the halls. That hill we would always roll down, it no longer mattered. 
and before I could comprehend it, Adrienne was on a flight to Colorado. She left without even saying goodbye. So this voiceover is really important. It's Jade's time to reflect on Adrian's absence and what it means for her and kind of the hole that it left in her. She left the girl that liked her, but what hurt more is that she left the girl who was by her side for all those years. And how can I move on from that? Will I ever move on? And as on? you can see, this random stranger approaches her, puts her hand on her shoulder. That was another thing I did for dramatic fictional purposes only to make the film more interesting and so that I could do this transition from the flashback into two years later. Ready to go? Yeah. Ooh. Jade's got a girlfriend. And you don't really know much about the love interest. She's just kind of there to signify Jade's moved on. One thing can really tear you down, but you shouldn't let it affect the rest of your life. So here you see she has a letter and she's deciding what she wants to do. Does she want to give Adrian a second chance or does she want to move on with her life? And so she makes the decision to throw the letter. It's been two years and she's finally getting back to her. Clearly she's moved on. So why shouldn't Jade move on to? When we filmed this shot in front of this beautiful tree with the white petals just blowing away in the wind, I already knew that it was gonna look amazing for the ending. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. So I just wanna wrap this up by saying thank you to all of my actors, York for helping me out, all the amazing musicians and singers who were let me use their songs for this project. I love you guys so much and thank you. Thank you to everyone who supports me, who watches these films, and I would love if you subscribed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.